Hello everybody. I wanted to make a follow-up video for the EcoKey tutorial. Let's maybe do it a little bit more cleanly. And now that I've been doing it for a while, uh, maybe explain a few things that were missed in the previous video. Uh, the other, the other thing I want to accomplish here is also. And sort of in the first half, I want to talk about. Uh, I want to talk about the setup for EcoKey. I want to do it a few times to show kind of how you know what pixels that I that I jump on and stop on and whatnot. And then I also want to add a section after that on setting up the drop because that's also a somewhat important part of the EcoKey um, the trick. Both, if you miss it, you have a jar drop chance for magic. The biggest thing that you lose out on if you miss Eco Key, and it is somewhat a precise trick, if you miss Eco Key, then you won't, you'll, you'll have to cast Fairy after that, and then you won't have enough for jump in the block room later on. So there's a, uh, a, jar, a drop opportunity that you can set up for a couple of rooms later. And I want to sort of go over how to keep track of all that stuff, or what I'm thinking of when I'm trying to set up a drop. So the first thing here is just the eco key setup. So we're in this room in Palace 5. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take care of this guy just so I can show off the, um, the, the spots where you stop. Okay, so you're walking into the room and you want the key, so in, on the top platform up there, the key is right in the middle of three blocks on the floor. This is right where you want to stop. Right where there's three blocks on the top. And this is not pixel perfect. You can be late. You know, you can be probably about between those little bolts. You can probably be anywhere between these two. And what I've found is there's a slight um, difference in the way you do the jump. If you're early or late, you can kind of adjust a little bit, but you want to try to stop right on that crack. So this is right where you want to stop. And I found that the easiest way to stop is to roll into a crouching stab. Some people just uh, like to come and stop and like kind of do a turn back and wait for about the right amount of time and then go. Uh, I found that just stopping with a couple of stabs is, a, is an instant stop, right? You just stop immediately. So what you want to do is you want to come and stop right there. And you want to do two stabs. And it's not as fast as you can go. That's too fast. You want to just do one, two. Just a, like a slow two stabs. Two normal stabs. But not as fast as you can go. So it's a little bit of a slower one. And then you're waiting for the bubble the skull bubble to bounce off the bottom corner of the screen and it's going to kind of do a jump diagonal. Or he's going to hit the ground, the side of the screen, the ceiling, and it's going to come down the shaft and you want to you want to hit the bubble with your face so that he's going to knock you back up onto the platform. So the stopping is the first step. This is a two-step process. The first one is stopping. Two stabs and then you want to Basically, you want to do the two stabs and then queue up or you know buffer the forward movement. You want to move immediately. And as soon as you you're going to walk up until this crack right here on the floor, you're going to walk until it's one t one block you know brick away from the edge. This is right where you're going to jump. Right when I, I line it up so that my front toe is touching that that crack in the floor. And the jump, it's got to be a full jump. It's got to be a full jump, so you got to hold jump the whole time. You can't let go. You can see if I let go early, my head, Link's head doesn't even reach the top. You got to hold it the whole time, so that you can see he's he's almost high enough, but not quite. You want to jump, but what you want to do is about halfway up the jump, you turn so you're facing left, and then you want to hit the skull bubble right there, right when you're facing backwards. Jump right there and do that. And you probably, you, you won't touch the side of the wall or you might just rub it just a little bit, but it's not like run into the wall and then go back. If you do that, then you lose height. So 
notes up, just like that. And the cadence, like I, uh, is, it's it's not exactly at the same time. You're not gonna, it's not a super fast jump. It's uh, it's kind of like the way I explained it before was in Great Palace when you're in the beacular room trying to get up onto the blocks. That's it's kind of the same. Right where it's a jump stab, this is a jump left. It's the same kind of idea. So, stop right here. Two slow ish, or two stabs that are not the fastest, but a little bit slower than that. Go to that corner and jump. So, let's try it now. Cast jump. slow um, of the jump. I was trying to adjust a little bit. That was good. There we go. It just takes practice. It's not going to happen the first time. The other thing is, whenever I get to this point in a run, you know, you're 50 plus minutes into the run. That was too early. Yeah, he didn't even come down that time. You're 50 plus minutes into the run, and it's kind of, you know, 12 seconds is riding on this. So that time, I was a little bit late, and so I jumped faster. I was trying to adjust a little bit. My jump was, my, my turn back was a little bit faster, so I could hit it. Oh, just made it that time. Fast. I was a little late on that one, and so I jumped, I did a turn around fast. If you jump, if you get it on the earlier side, then it, you're going to delay it just a slight, a slight bit. Now that's sort of, adjusting like that on the fly is, is a little tricky. So I was late on that one again, so I did a fast one. I don't know if I can try to do an early one. Oh, didn't even make it that time. Yeah. So I did it a little bit slower that time. Um, and when I'm talking about slower, I mean the cadence of the jump left. If you can just get it so that you're stopping right on and then you do it and you get muscle memory, that's really where you want to be. If um, once you get to a point where you can adjust a little bit, um, that's sort of how I've um, learned how to do this a little bit more consistently, or at least hitting it in a run. But you land right on it and it's the same every time. Okay. So. The next thing I wanted to do here was talk about the drop. So you get it, and um, let's just fail it once. Let's say you stop like way too early. Oh no, that was bad. Okay, all right. So cast fairy, get up there. Don't get hit too much so that you run out of magic. <laughs> and then you gotta start circle back. Whatever, get the key. But you notice that we're completely out of magic now. So you got. You have a few options here. Um, if you have extra lives, you can just come in here and take a death, which I'm not going to do right now. But you can just take a death right there, and you refill. The second option is uh, you have a drop set up, which is what I'm going to be explaining here. In this room, there's two iron knuckles, red iron knuckles. If you're at attack 8, they're one hit, they're pretty easy, you just strike them as you're falling off this block, one of these two tile high blocks. You want to set up a drop on one of these two guys. I don't know if the drop is set up. 
on the save state. It's not. But you want to try to set it up on one of these two guys. If you don't have the drop set up, you can go into this room, which is down the elevator, and try to kill one of these Makos. Um, it can be a little bit tricky, uh, waiting for them, sometimes it's just a waste of time. The final option is just to keep going, skip the key, come into this room, and there's going to be a jar right here. Oh, there's a, there's my drop. But there's be a, there would be a key right here. Alright, dude. This drop would be one earlier. So then you come back, you cast jump, and whatever, you take care of business. Okay. If you have enough magic, uh, another thing here is you can make that. Oops, I cast jump again. If you have, you can queue up fairy and then keep fairy right out, right out of here. Um, yeah, you, so you can get that key when there's, when there's only two blocks high. You kind of have to get a running jump for it, though. Alright, so to set up a drop... I'm just going to go back to here. To set up a drop, I'm going to bring up some maps. Or at least I'm going to try to. Here we go. Alright. So you can see on the map here, this is Palace 5. change my brush size here. This is paint. Uh, wonderful tool. Alright, so entrance coming down the here. Got the steps with the uh, ropes on them. And then this is the eco key area right here. Where you're jumping up in to get this key. Keep going and then you've got you've got uh, this oops. Uh, let's see. Can I make this red or something? You got this guy, and this guy. Those, that's where you want the drops to be set up. Which means, your six count on the large enemies needs to be at five, or, or four or five. If it's four, you'll get it on this guy. If it's five, you'll get it on this guy. So how do you make sure that you have your drop set up at a four or a five? Well, you got there's nothing between Palace 4 and Palace 5. So let's switch over to Palace 4. These are all. This is the. This is Palace Four. And let's count to see what enemies are you have available in Palace Four. You got the Moa. Oh, that's right. Reset my size and I'll make it red. Okay. You have the Moa. Going down, going this way. Technically, you have these guys too, but um, don't waste your time. It's random when they jump. You got this, this red uh, armored Stalfos. Um, these uh, the blue Doom Knockers don't count. Technically, you've got the, these. There's two guys in here by the by the boots. There's a red and a blue. Um, you got this red guy. here also, but once again, he's you'll have to draw him down, and um, usually you shouldn't need it. There's plenty of guys in here who are skipping, or uh, either, you either skip them, or you let, leave them be, or you skip them or kill them, to set up your drop, right? So you'll have to know where your drop is coming into this palace, but let's just talk about this palace right now. Ideally, in a perfect world, to not skip to, to only kill the enemies that you need to, that are in your way. That is, let's change to green. Um, these guys you can't skip. So, this guy and this guy. So that's two. This guy on the bridge over here, this red one, on the second death abuse room, the lava room. This is, this you can skip, but it's difficult. So it's better if you can just plan on killing him. guys in the boots room you can skip. The 
that guy you can skip, the red, this one you can skip. Um, the MOA is usually the point where you decide, oh, I forgot this guy. I knew I was missing one. Right underneath the key. So that guy you can't skip either. Alright, so right now we've got one, two, three, four, four. You got four guys in this palace that you can't skip. Right? And you want, what did I say you want your count to be at? Four or five, right? Exiting the palace. You want it to be at four or five. So, if you get the drop, uh, so you, what you want to do is plan on getting the drop on this MOA. Or right, right, roughly around there. If the if you upstab this MOA as you're entering Palace Four and it's the drop, that means you're set. That means your drop is set up for this Ikuki um, uh, failure scenario slash just knowing where your drop is going to be. Right? Even if you nail Ikuki every time, it's still a good idea to have this drop set up for basically the rest of the game. It, it, it makes everything so that you know exactly where your drop is for the whole rest of the game. So the question is, depending on where your drop is at before Palace 4 decides whether or not you... The way I do it is, decides whether or not I kill this MOA, and as another backup, this guy here. Um, this red, red um, armor Stelphos. If you get this guy and it's a drop, skip this guy, skip him, kill one... Um, this guy... Oh, no, no, no bridge down here, red IK, and then the two, you skip this guy, and then three and four, then your, your, your count is at four, you're good. So you're, the, the way that, uh, when I'm coming into Palace 4, the MOA and this first red armored Stelphos are the two that I'm going to be deciding whether I let live or whether I kill to know where your drop is before this, <laughs> where do you think you go? Palace 3. So let's pull up the map for Palace 3. There we go. Alright. Uh, reset my brush size again. Alright. So, Palace 3. To know where you're at before this, obviously Palace 2 and etc. But Palace 2 is kind of a up in the air. You're recovering from an attack 3 run, or you're um, maybe you didn't get any pee bags and you're going to have to kill a few more or, f or less things. Obviously, in an ideal scenario, you want to skip as much in Palace 2 as you can. Um, but knowing your count coming out of Palace 2 is the important thing. Um, for me, whenever I'm doing it, it's usually like 2 or 3. Uh, sometimes it's 1, sometimes it's 4, but. Um, I, I guess that's most of the options anyway, so just knowing what that number is. So let's see in Palace 3. For Palace 3, there's, it's a lot shorter. There's not as many options here. Um, this guy, red might not be the best option here. <laughs> we got red, you got that guy, you got this option here. Um, here's this red guy, this red guy, red iron knuckle, this one. Those guys you get. You have these two right here, that one and this one, and then possibly right in the opening you have this blue armored Stelphos and potentially this guy. You know, if the drop is a, is a is a red IK instead of the jar. Alright, so which guys, just like we did before, are mandatory? Which ones do you have to kill? Um, this guy, right at the... Let's go, let's, I guess, let's do go from the beginning. Um, this could be a, a red IK or a drop. If it's a drop, then it's not mandatory. This guy we usually skip. Um, I'll kill him sometimes, depending on if I need to, for a drop setup. Um, but you don't have to going, let's see, you can skip this guy by the outside key, coming down and going to the raft. So this guy you generally want to get, this guy you generally get, you can't skip this guy, coming down you 
can't skip this guy or this guy. That's one, two, three, four already. This one you can jump over. This one you have to get. So of the ones you have to get, one, two, three, four, five. There's five of them. You can skip everything else. So palace three. So what I what I usually try to do is um, if you, um, the one other the one other guy you have to be concerned with, which I didn't bring up a map for, but the cave before palace three. There's a blue gorilla in there. That one also counts for, toward the drop. So whatever your count is coming out of two, don't forget to add one for the for the blue gorilla. And what you want is your count to be at five, right? To set it up for to be on that uh, the moa, right, on palace four. So if you want your count to be at five, then one, two, three, four, five. You got five of these, which means you want your drop to be either right at the end of Palace 2 or on the Gurria, something like that. You have some wiggle room, because coming out of, you, what you want to do is have your drop at 5, or, right, you know, 4 or 5, I should say 5 or 6, because 6 would be the drop. And then you skip the MOA. If it's at 1, then you skip the MOA, let's see if it's at 1, I'm getting ahead of myself. The, what I usually try to do, my count is usually like two, let's say, coming in. So then I'll force a drop. Or if it, let's say, yeah. You'll either force a drop by killing this guy. Uh, the important thing to know, I guess I'm starting to, I'm starting to get lost here. The important thing to know is one, two, three, four, five. You've got five in here that you have to kill. In Palace 4, you, there's a certain number that you have to kill also. So getting to knowing that, you can calculate whether or not you need to kill this guy. What did I do? Uh, this is a question mark right here, this guy. This guy here is a question mark. You can kill or let live depending on what your count is. This guy you can kill or let live depending on what your count is. And the same thing with this guy in the beginning. That, between those options, and the Gurria outside of Palace 3, either skipping or killing, that basically f lets you have full c uh, control over where your drop is going to be entering Palace 4. Or I should say, after the MOA in Palace 4. If we go back to Palace 4 here, the MOA is right at the beginning of the palace. So if you already had your drop, let's say, on, let's say it dropped on the Gurria, outside of Palace 4, or Palace 3, then skip this MOA and your count is set up again. Your count is at zero. If the uh, drop happened on uh, Palace 3, if the drop happened on another one that happens a lot, is this red guy right before the boss right before Reebonak. If your drop happens here, that means your count is at zero, and you want to skip the Gurria and skip the MOA. Skip the Gurria outside of Palace 3, and skip the MOA at the beginning of Palace 4. Does that make sense? What you're trying to do is make it so that your count is either a 4 or a 5, entering Palace 5. And it starts this early. Now, once you have that set up, it, you bit your your drop is going to be completely deterministic. There's only after this the number of enemies that have drops. You basically have to kill all of them. You can't skip really any of them. So it it follows that your your drop for Palace Five for the uh, not the drop but your level up for Palace Five because you're not going to necessarily get a, a bag. Is going to be at the same spot or roughly the same spot every time, depending on you know your Uma or your um, Mago kills. Um, you can set up by using this method. You can set up a drop in the um, uh, the cave before I can't think of the name of it before Nukasudo. 
You can set up a drop in there so that there's a jar opportunity so that in New Kasuto you don't have to stop at the Magic Lady. It's a lot of thinking to go into where your drop is at significantly ahead of time for you know a 12 second time save. <laughs> but uh, that's 12 seconds and it's a chance to do Eco Key. And this is mainly for if you fail it, you have a drop opportunity immediately afterward in, on one of these two guys. Uh, Palace 5. One of these two guys. 4 or 5, so then this will be the drop, or this will be the drop. I like making it this guy, because then you're not worrying about this dropper. But sometimes you don't have a choice based on where your drop is at. So that is what I'm... An explanation um, of what I'm thinking of setting up a drop and doing a cookie. And so now let's just do this a few more times. Just to show that consistency is doable. take a deep breath right here just just focus this is just practice This was a little bit of a longer video, but uh, I went into a little bit more detail here with the drop setup. So, thanks everyone for watching. Hope this helps.